Yeah, hey everybody, this is Ian from mindfulmarketplace.com and in this short uh, video or you know, brief presentation, I'm gonna share with you some of the best practices that we are learning about uh, doing email outreach or using email marketing to build our brand, to connect with our community and to cultivate clients uh, in a fun, creative and bootstrapped way. So. There are lots of rules and lots of um, you know guides on using email marketing to build your business, especially cold email. Lots of them are kind of bullshitty. Lots of them are, are um, you know, I mean, are, are are niche specific or you know, there are not the, the 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 one rule that's not in this set of rules that I'm putting forth here is that there really are no rules. You have to really um, experiment with this art yourself. It's more of an art than a science. I have learned um, two things actually over the years of doing this with various degrees of success. One, you're always going to have you're always going to have more success the more that you try and apply and optimize and improve and tweak and critique this process. Right? It never is as good on day one as it's going to be on day one hundred. And the other thing that I've learned is that um, you know. It, Something that works in one niche doesn't always work in the other from a languaging standpoint. You have to be very mindful of the sort of jargon and the psychographic, demographic uh, information that is related to your particular area or your niche, your vertical. Um, you know, using language, let's say, for mindfulness teachers, this is what we're working on now, comparing that to working on similar niches or similar uh, email outreach on a local community, let's say in a city or a town for a restaurant or a car detailer is very different, right? So you have to be mindful of that, that, you know, you want to, again, tweak and critique, optimize and improve your messaging predicated on your market. All right. That being said, these are the things that we have found are working the best right now. And I can tell you for sure that the number one thing has been this, right? using humor, um, you know, is not only a great way of standing out, but we're also doubling literally at this point, I'm recording this at the very, very end of July of 2020, we're doubling our response rates. I, I'm not going to tell you exactly, uh, you know, the messaging that we're using. Actually, I'm going to have some of this in our community, in our course community, which is private. If you're a member, I'll be posting some of this uh, over the next 10 days or so. So you can actually see the exact emails that we're using. But I can tell you that using some, you know, COVID uh, humor, um, you know, loosely done or tastefully done, um, just in light of the fact that we're all living through this shitstorm of a universe without any real finite end in focus has really gotten some good laughs and some good, and I'm tailoring it to our niche as well. So we're getting some, you know, some good, chuckles out of our, you know, cold emails from people who are telling us, hey, that really made me laugh and that surprised us, or that surprised me, and that's really why I responded, right? We've had a couple of people who said, I don't ever respond to these, but just because, you know, you just made me laugh, uh, I'm interested to learn more. All right, number two, personalize everything. Personalize the subject line, uh, the hello and then one extra personalization element in the actual copy. Typically, at the very end, I'm finding is best for me, best for us. Um, you know, if you don't personalize anything, you're going to get a really bad response, right? So I worked with somebody a couple of days ago on the phone um, who was having a tough time with their own uh, community outreach using email. And when I looked at the emails that they're sending, none of them have any personalization, right? They're not even saying, you know, like identifying the name of the of the business or the name of the person who's running the business that's just a you know that's a score on your own goal sort of mistake you know you don't want to make um you know you don't want to omit the most important uh you know noun which is the person that you're addressing right so uh, personalize your emails okay lead with industry industry news or something happening in their business right not yours this is a mistake that i used to always make i would kind of puff my chest out and want to talk about what we were doing 
and how what we were doing could benefit them. What I'm finding works best is if you want to talk about something that's exploding or working really well or something that's really hot or, you know, talk about the industry overall, not your slice of the, of the industry, not your community, right? So rather than being sort of um, prideful about it, just like use the industry or them, right? Talk about what's going on in their business that's exciting and use this as the lead for the email. Also, you can tie humor into this in a really fun and, and playful way. You know, if you're writing to uh, restaurants, as I know some of the folks in my uh, you know, audience, my course community are building local directories, you know, you can make jokes about what's going on. No one, if you're living in a place where no one is going out or there are stay at home orders in place or restaurants are closed, you know, you can make jokes around that sort of thing in a, you know, be careful with this. You don't want to offend people, but you can make a light in a way of saying, hey, the better things are coming. You know, the future is bright for all of us. Things are a little bit, you know, dismal right now, but here's how to plan for, you know, a, a prosperous future. All right. So play with this a little bit as well. All right. Show your work, not your resume. Again, you know, like one of the things I see people doing, and I've kind of had this tendency in the past before uh, as well, is to talk about the things that I've done, right? Where I've been, what I've built, et cetera, et cetera. Don't do that, right? Instead, show work that is related to their needs, right? So if you're selling web design services, you don't want to talk about the 50 websites that you built or the award that you want or the college degree that you have. You want to show very specific examples of things right now that you've just completed that are germane or relevant to your audience, right? I mean, so if you're building mindfulness-oriented um, landing pages for book launches and things like that that we're doing, you want to have examples of that work to show. And, you know, you want to say, this is what we're working on right now in July of 2020. And we thought this would be a really good fit for uh, your brand, your business as well. Again, I recommend you tie that in to the Google News Alerts uh, piece that I did uh, last week. So you can actually find out what people are working on in your uh, target audience. And you can know, you know, by dint of someone's being, you know, referenced in the news for launching a new course or, you know, doing an event in a local community, et cetera, et cetera. The more personalizations, the more that you know about your subjects, right, the extra work that you do, the more you're going to differentiate yourself from all of the loons who are just out there spamming everybody in the universe trying to get some work, all right? Show your work, make it relevant to your audience, all right? If you're building a directory or a community, use your seed listings to establish the appearance of credibility, community, or the appearance of exclusivity. What that is, all that means is, you know, seed your site. We all know what that means. You want to add a, you know, a initial, uh, you know, you know, portfolio, or that's the wrong word. You want to add listings. You want to add some demo content to your site. You know, I also recommend using curated content for this blog content, but of course you also need seed listings. Well, just add the people that are going to be most appealing to your audience. So that when they see those folks are on your community already, you're going to look much more um, appealing to them, right? Because everyone wants to sort of do what the leaders in a niche market vertical industry or locality are doing. And if you have some of those leaders listed already, it just gives you the ability to appear more, um, you know, exclusive, more credible, et cetera, et cetera. The other thing I want to say before I forget this, it just occurred to me, you know, some people always tell me when I say show your work or some variant of that idea that they haven't started doing work yet, right? So they don't have any work to show. Buy a template, a theme forest template or a landing page template or whatever it is, and just either install that on your server and customize it a little bit and just show that work or just show the, you know, the theme itself, right? I mean, you can send people, I mean, I've done this and people don't notice. You can just send them, if you're selling restaurant, uh, you know, uh, websites or web development or that sort of thing, send, you know, buy, like send your, your, your clients to a WordPress theme that's for restaurants that you bought, right? I mean, you could just show that work if you're actually going to be replicating or emulating the same exact demo. 
okay, I'm not a really pushy person. I talk fast and it, it, like in my own ear right now, it sounds like I'm yelling. So it probably sounds like I'm a pushy person. I'm actually not. I don't like to push people. I'm very, um, you know, I, 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 I'm really careful about who I work with. So saying ask for the sale might sound like an easy thing for me to, to, to suggest. But the truth is you don't have to ask for a sale. The sale is really an action. Right. You want you don't want to leave that last bit of that email outreach open. Hope we can hope we can collaborate in the future. Reach out if you have any questions. That sort of wishy washy, you know, kind of nonsense is not going to move you forward. Right. Human psychology plays a role in all of this. And people need to have some finite focus about what it is that you're asking them to do or they'll do nothing. Right. Don't be passive. Don't be pushy but do have some action item that you want folks to do um, or else they're going to do nothing. All right. Number seven, this is a really, really important, important thing to do. And it's so easy and it amazes me how no, nobody does it. Have a previous contact uh, point as a reference, right? So you can actually say to someone, Hey Ian, you know, my name is Joe and I'm reaching out to you and blah, 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 blah. Loved your tweet last week on X really agree with that. I mean, so not only are you saying really, um, you know, did I like that tweet, you can actually say, I like that tweet, or I retweeted your tweet, or I shared your Facebook post, or I did XYZ on your, you know, Instagram uh, share from last Tuesday, whatever it is, right? People are going to go back and they're going to look at that. And they're going to be like, wow, this person actually is already engaged with me. You know, and I didn't even realize it or I didn't notice it or I did notice it and didn't know who they were. And here they are appearing in my email inbox today. This is really, really easy to do. You can, you know, even, this is especially relevant if you're reaching out to somebody. Well, it's relevant whether they have a big following or, no, or really a small following. The, the, the psychological piece to this, which I found is salient and relevant, is that if people know that you're engaging with them on fa on social media, they're going to be, of course, uh, grateful and appreciative and all that good stuff because we all want to be social media rock stars like the Kardashians, right? I mean, everyone, you know, wants that Gary V sort of, you know, following and, and, and all that fun stuff. I really don't actually, but in general, that's, that's true about all of us deep down. But the other thing we're all afraid of, and this certainly applies to me as well, is if they, if you're, if you're telling them, by dint of that you shared or participated in their social media uh, experience, right? And they don't respond. There, there is an added burden, this little trigger that you're setting in someone's mind that they should respond to you because you're, they don't want to be publicly embarrassed or publicly shamed by you being like, wow, I reached out to you four times, Ian, and you never responded even after I've like shared or retweeted all your you know, tweets or whatever. Right. So there's this other little, you know, lever that you can pull when you reference uh, having engaged with their uh, social content in a previous, um, you know, like another day, a previous uh, week or whatever. Right. So you're, you're doing two things. You're one, you're kind of setting them up um, to respond to you because no one wants to be publicly shamed or publicly embarrassed. And, you know, all brands are much more sensitive to this these days, but it also in the more altruistic or the more uh, pure sense, you're, you know, people are good and people are, are, you know, they, they feel uh, they have gratitude for those who support them in a public way. So they're going to be more likely to, um, you know, to, to want to say thank you. And the way to say thank you is to respond. All right. I think I said enough about that. And lastly, this is so, so, so important. And I learned this the, the hard way, but it's one of the best lessons, uh, you know, that I've learned doing email outreach. Have a email two in the queue, right? And an email three and four to don't quit after just one. It's super easy to just give up after one, one email. And what I found, and this is really, really was a sort of, I had to push through this because I don't like like just emailing people over and over again who aren't responding in a cold, you know, I mean, if someone's on a newsletter list, it's one thing. 
or they signed up to be notified about, you know, they're on a course, you know, list or on a product list. But if you're emailing someone cold, it can be, it can, it can feel awkward to like send them follow-ups when they haven't responded. But what I've learned and what all the best science and evidence on this is that the more emails that you send, the better your 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 response and Toto is going to be. So you're actually going to get the best responses after e emails number three and four rather than email number one, right? So if you never send three and four, you'll never know what how good your business could be if you're just giving up after you don't hear back from someone once, right? So sequence your follow-ups in a smart and strategic way, and you will quite literally, the evidence shows, double your leads, right? It's, you know, you have to push through it. The, the, the instinct is to want to say, all right, well, Joe didn't respond, therefore I'm not going to bother him again. But you got to, like, you know, it's really important to, to, to think about the value that you can offer Joe and that you really have the ability to transform Joe's life. And you don't want Joe to miss out. Therefore, you're going to keep on altruistically or uh, ethically, let's say, because it's not altruistic, ethically being um, aggressive in the service of helping as many people with your mission as possible. All right. Of course, if someone asks you not to contact them again, you don't, but very rarely will that ever happen. I mean, the real most common response is no response. I mean, most people will simply not respond at all. But once in a while, I'll get somebody who will say, you know, you know, don't email me again, or they'll have to say something, you know, not, very rarely is it not nice, but that happens too on occasion. And if that happens, obviously you just take them off of your follow-up list. All right, so I hope this has been helpful. You can download all of these in the uh, course community. And if you have any questions, as always, post them, and I'm happy to, to help with what I can. Thanks so much, and have a wonderful day.